quiz for prep. So congratulations, we're officially halfway done local anesthesia. So let's take a look at some of the injections we'll be delivering on the mandible. So let's take a look at the inferior alveolar or IA nerve block and lingual nerve block. The inferior alveolar IA and also the incisive and mental nerves which are branches off the IA nerve will get numb and also the lingual nerve will also get numb as the solution diffuses to the lingual nerve after you deposit it but we're going to do it in a separate step in local anesthesia lab. So we use a 25 long needle for several reasons. We want the rigidity of the 25 gauge to travel through the tissues and minimize deflection. The area is vascular, so we want to be able to confirm with almost 100% accuracy whether we are in a blood vessel. We use a long needle because we need approximately 20 to 25 millimeters to insert to the deposition site and we don't want to hub the needle. Remember the hub of the needle is the weakest point. There is also a risk of a positive aspiration. It's about 10 to 15 percent chance that you'll get a positive aspiration. So we will do a two-plane aspiration. So you'll first with your thumb Feel for the deep concavity of the coronoid notch located on the ramus. So the coronoid notch is one of our landmarks. You'll have the patient open very wide and you'll keep your thumb in the notch. Then you'll begin with the barrel of the syringe in the corner of the mouth opposite the injection side over the contralateral premolars in parallel with the mandibular occlusal plane. The syringe will be approximately 6 to 10 millimeters above the mandibular occlusal plane and at the most posterior aspect of the pterygo mandibular raphe. So the needle will penetrate just lateral to the raphe, travel 20 to 25 millimeters, about two-thirds the length of the long needle. And it will travel this length with our target deposition site just below the lingula. And the lingula is like this little bony protuberance which exists above the mandibular foramen. And the mandibular foramen is where the IA nerve enters. So we want to be just below the lingula and just above the mandibular foramen. Then we want to tap bone. We want to get all the way to the bone. We want to tap bone, withdraw a millimeter by sort of relaxing your hand. And then we want to aspirate, rotate, aspirate again. As long as you achieve two negative aspirations, you can deposit solution. The next step is we'll withdraw the needle about halfway out. We'll aspirate again. We want to be anterior and medial to the inferior alveolar nerve because that is where the lingual nerve exists. And if we achieve a negative aspiration for the lingual nerve, then we'll deposit about a stopper full for the lingual nerve. So what gets numb when you anesthetize the IA and lingual nerve? Now remember the IA branches off into the mental and incisive, so guess what? You get a lot of bang for your buck with this injection too. It's basically indicated to manage teeth in one mandibular quadrant. So mandibular teeth to the midline, pulp, buccal periosteum, anterior to the molars, connective tissue, mucous membrane, lip, anterior two-thirds of the tongue, and floor of the oral cavity. You'll be depositing about three-quarters of a cartridge 
1.5 milliliters. You want to save about two stopperfuls, one stopperful for the lingual and one stopperful for the long buckle. Basically, the only thing it doesn't get numb after this injection is the buckle nerve. The buccal nerve is a separate nerve and it's responsible for anesthetizing the soft tissue, the gingiva and the bone adjacent to the molars. So with the IA injection, we can have some local complications that occur. We can have a hematoma. It's a very vascular area. Um, hematoma with an IA usually doesn't happen. Um, sometimes a person can develop an occult, and it's spelled O-C-C-U-L-T. Occult means hidden. They can have a hidden hematoma. You have no external signs that there's a bruise there. But it can develop, and it can be a barrier to the patient achieving anesthesia. Trismus is another complication that can occur. And it's usually associated with the medial pterygoid muscle. And you can deliver a perfect injection to someone, the IA injection, and the patient can still develop this trismus from having the medial pterygoid muscle penetrated during the injection. And you can deliver a perfect injection, a person can still develop this trismus. They may have a little difficulty opening their mouth. So facial nerve paralysis can happen with an IA nerve block if you don't tap the bone prior to depositing solution. With the IO, you may have had experienced a little droopiness. With the IA, it is a very significant drooping of half of the face where you'll have to tape the uh, um, eye closed with gauze. And what has happened is if you don't tap the bone, you may have sort of overshot your target site and you're so deep your the needle has actually entered the deep lobe of the parotid gland where the facial nerve passes through and you'll deposit solution onto the facial nerve and that's what gets numb so by tapping the bone we confirm that we're not in the parotid gland and it's a safety precaution that you always must take with the ia Another complication that can arise with the IA is, or lingual, is paresthesia. Paresthesia is usually associated more with the lingual nerve. Someone's tongue may stay numb for a long period of time. It was associated in the past with articaine, a 4% articaine nerve block. There are different theories as to what causes it. We'll talk a little bit more about it when we talk about local and systemic complications. There are some special considerations when we are doing the IA lingual nerve blocks. Premature contact with bone. Now you've only entered, you've gone in about 10 millimeters and you contact the bone. What do you do? Withdraw the needle slightly. Don't come out of the tissue. Withdraw it slightly. Adjust the syringe immediately over the canine. So you'll take the barrel of the syringe and move it towards the canine or lateral incisor. We'll show you this in class. But then we're going to increase. Once you come forward over the canine lateral incisor, then you'll increase the depth to clear the premature contact with bone. Then you'll shift the barrel of the syringe back over the premolars in advance until bone is contacted at the appropriate depth. So if you contact bone too soon, you'll shift the barrel of the syringe over the canines. Now you can also, this is more rare, have no contact with bone. So if you have no contact with bone, you'll withdraw the needle to a half to a quarter of the length, and you'll reposition the syringe distally. You'll go back towards the molar with the barrel and advance until you contact bone. And then if you're over the molars, you're still not contacting bone, 
Then we're going to have you completely withdraw the needle and change your penetration site up three to five millimeters anteriorly and penetrate tissue and proceed with the injection. And then also with the IA, so you're depositing the solution above the foramen. So you want to sit your patient up for about one to five minutes to let gravity help to get the solution through the foramen and the patient becomes numb. Before you set them up, you'll do the long buckle, but part of like the whole IA lingual long buckle injections, at the end of them, you'll set the patient up for about five minutes. So let's take a look at that long buckle. Now we're gonna use a 25 long needle here too. Not for any special reason, other than that, it's basically a continuation of the IA lingual nerve block. You'll come all the way out of the tissue and you'll change the barrel so that it's now on the side. So if you've delivered a left IA, you're coming from the right hand side to deliver that left IA. And to do the left long buckle, now you're going to approach from the left side. And you'll approach at the height of the mandibular occlusal plane to the mucous membrane, distal and buckle to the <clears throat> most distal molar in the arch. It's almost like you roll off the most distal buccal cusp of the last molar in the arch. And the syringe will be parallel with the occlusal plane on the side of the injection, but buckle to the mandibular teeth. You're just going to cover the bevel. You don't go in very far. It's only two to four millimeter penetration depth. You've got to get the two millimeters in there. You have to cover the bevel or what will happen is you'll see all the solution sort of flowing out everywhere because you haven't covered the bevel where the solution comes out. And what you want to do is you want to get the buccal nerve as basically as it passes over the anterior border of the ramus. And you only need about a one plane aspiration and then you'll use the last stopper in that one cartridge. The mental incisive and for the mental incisive, we'll be using a 25 short needle. 25 because it approaches 100% accuracy in determining if we are in a blood vessel. And a short because we don't have to go very deep. We're going to use a two-plane aspiration here because it's a very vascular site and there is a risk of a hematoma. So our landmarks for the mental incisive nerve block is the mucobuccal fold just anterior to the mental foramen and it's usually located below and between the first and second premolars. So how are you going to find this mental foramen? You can palpate for it. The other thing you can use radiographs. The other thing when a patient is closed, the pupil, the infraorbital foramen and the mental foramen will all be in one line but it's usually located between the first and second premolars. We want to be a little anterior to the mental foramen with our needle and a little superior, a little above it. We don't want to enter the foramen. We're just going to be a little in front of it, a little above it, and then gravity will help to take the solution into the foramen. So what's getting numb here? So this is kind of, we combine these injections, meaning we deposit the solution. Now if we deposit the solution, we've done our four to six millimeters, we've penetrated, we've deposited the solution that we need, the, a third of a cartridge, and we do nothing else. What's going to get numb, you'll have done a mental nerve block, which was just a soft tissue, right? Because the mental nerve exits out of that foramen. So it's just going to provide soft tissue anesthesia for the buccal soft tissues anterior to the mental foramen. All right, so that would be a mental nerve block. You've done nothing else. You've deposited the solution. You make it an incisive, and you get palpal anesthesia by doing one thing. And that one thing is applying pressure, usually extraorally, but sometimes you can do it intraorally, following the injection. 
We give a good one to two minutes of pressure, helping that solution get through the foramen to the incisive nerve. And then we're gonna have all that buccal soft tissue anesthesia for the teeth, right? Because the mental nerve will get numb. And then by pushing it through the foramen to the incisive nerve, now we get some palpal anesthesia as well. And some local complications here include a hematoma intraorally and extraorally. So let's use some good pressure. And systemic complications, we want to prevent any kind of toxicity by slow deposition and aspiration. And that holds true for all injections, slow deposition, and really good aspirations.